Hey everyone, welcome to season two of the Academy Insider Podcast. I'm so excited to be officially coming to you as a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which I know is gonna give me the best opportunity to guide, serve, and support midshipmen, future midshipmen, and their families. And I knew there was no better way to start this off than by having the first episode be all about plebe summer advice and preparation. And when I started Academy Insider back in 2017, I was able to provide the perspective of a recent graduate, someone who's just been there. But now the reality is I'm old. I graduated back in 2017. I'm eight years removed from my time as the regimental commander of Plebe Summer. I've transitioned out of the military and I'm now a full civilian. So I knew that I needed a perspective that is more contemporary. And so I'm so excited to be joined today by Grant Booker. Grant is a class of 2023 graduate of the Naval Academy, commissioned as a Marine Corps officer, but most importantly for this episode is that he also served as the regimental commander of Plebe Summer during his time at the, at the Naval Academy. And so I think you're going to see as we share our stories and our experiences that even though some things may be different, a lot of things are still the exact same and that the mission and purpose of Plebe Summer remains consistent. In this episode, we talk about our experiences, how we prepared, and then most importantly, we give our advice based on our experiences and our observations about how midshipmen can best prepare, both in, a, in an actual physical sense and tangible things you can do, as well as the right approach and mindset to bring into Pleep Summer. So I hope you really enjoy this episode. If you have any questions or comments or just want to reach out, please shoot me a message either on the Facebook page, YouTube, email, whatever the case is. I'd love to get to know you, learn about your situation, and see how I can help. Thank you so much and enjoy the episode. The Academy Insider Podcast is sponsored by the Vermeer Group, a residential real estate company that serves the United States Naval Academy community and other select clientele in both California and Texas. If I can ever answer a real estate related question for you or connect you with a trusted Academy affiliated agent in the market which you're in, please reach out to me directly at grant at the Vermeergroup.com. You can also reach out to me on my LinkedIn page, Grant Vermeer, and I'd be happy to respond to you there. Thank you so much. And now let's get back to the episode. My man, Grant, first of all, great name. Second of all, thanks so much for joining <laughs> us here on the Academy Insider Podcast. If you don't mind just giving the audience a quick background about you, where are you from, what brought you to the Academy, uh, and then a little bit of background about you as a, as a midshipman, company, activities, anything of the sort. Absolutely. So. Uh, my name's Grant Booker. Uh, it's a strong first name. That's right. <laughs> so appreciate the shout out. Born and raised in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, growing up, my grandfather was a Marine. Uh, and that's really what sparked my interest uh, in the military at first. And then the Naval Academy, uh, he kind of steered me in that direction. So I was super grateful to follow in his footsteps as a Marine. Uh, when I was at, at the Academy, my first couple of years there, I was boxing. Um, and then COVID hit and that kind of messed some things up. So, uh, but had a lot of other great opportunities, uh, was president of my class, um, got a chance to serve as a regimental commander for plebe summer, uh, mm -hmm. in my senior year, going into my senior year, uh, and then yep. picked up a commission, uh, as a Marine Corps officer. And now I'm here at, uh, Marine Artillery Officers Course, uh, out in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. So got to do all the stuff I wanted to do. I uh, have no complaints uh, about what the Academy gave me. <laughs> First of all, congratulations uh, on so many of those different fronts. For anyone who's listening, Grant's a super humble dude. To casually drop that both he's the class president and was the British commander at Pleep Summer, like those are things that, that don't come easy. <laughs> uh, we'll just put it that way. And we'll kind of talk about it. I have other episodes talking about Pleep Summer organization, hierarchy, and how that all works. But like he was the highest ranking midshipman during Pleep Summer. And so, you know, as we go through this episode and you're listening for all the parents out there for prospective midshipmen, people who have their appointment and may be coming, like this is the dude who is the five striper. Like when you show up, you're going to have to memorize the name of the person who's in his role in your year. Like that's just, it is what it is. So, and then Marine artillery is no joke either. So uh, I just want to give you a big congrats for, for getting that as your MOS and going out there and doing the Lord's work. That, that's not an easy job. So congrats, congratulations on that as well. It's been a blessing. I give I give glory to God on all this. Um, it's definitely not by my own abilities. God's blessed me in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, man, I, it's beautiful. I, I love the humility. I love the grace. But let's let's tear, let's bring this back towards Pleep Summer because this episode, again, for anyone right. listening, is all going to be about Pleep Summer preparation and advice. So, again, for context, both of us 
in our respective years were the regimental commander of Pleep Summer, which once you're out of the academy, it really doesn't mean much at all. Even when you're <laughs> at the academy, it doesn't really mean much. I think kind of the biggest takeaway that we'll offer to you is that we got to see Pleep Summer from a really high level, right? Like we got to see how it all worked. We saw all 30 platoons kind of train. We got to witness how everything happened from, from all aspects. And we got to communicate with the actual officer in charge of Pleep Summer and the commandant and the superintendent and got a really high level view of, you know, the purpose of Pleep Summer. So that's, that's where we're going to come to you from today. But before we even jump into that, I just want to ask you a little bit about your Pleep Summer experience. When you showed up as a plebe, how was it for you? Did you did you like it? Did you not like it? Kind of what was your experience going through Plebe Summer? Yeah, so Plebe Summer, I think I didn't really think about Plebe Summer as I was going into Plebe Summer. Sure. I think for me, I was really just enjoying, you know, people are patting you on the back. Oh, congrats, Naval Academy. Wow, it's going to be great. You're going to love Army Navy. <laughs> yeah. So the entire time I was getting ready to go to the Naval Academy, I was only thinking about what I was going to be doing after I was done with Plebe Summer. Yep. And that's really not the right mentality to have going into it. You have to see Plebe Summer as the thing that you are doing. Uh, I think there were definitely times where during Plebe Summer, I felt like, oh, I didn't sign up for Plebe Summer. Looking back, you know, I was 18. That was very, very naive. Yes, I was signing up to do all the really cool things you get to do at the academy sure. after Plebe Summer, but you are just as much signing up to do Plebe Summer. So for me, Sleep summer was tough, not physically, not academically or anything. It was tough because of my mentality. So I struggled not because of the difficulty or not because of my abilities, but just because of my perspective on it, honestly. Sure. Um, and then, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Looking back on it, I really see that there were a lot of opportunities to grow that I might have missed during my sleep summer. But the, the value in it now, I, I can absolutely see. Yeah, dude, I'm with you. What's funny is I had the exact same like mentality and mindset as you because, again, I was I was a recruited basketball player. So when I showed up, it was kind of like you. I was like, I'm looking forward to the, to the school year. Like I'm ready to go play basketball. Dude. Exactly. Like I came here, to, I, I came here to hoop. I don't like I don't know what's going on, but like I just feel like once <laughs> basketball practice start, and they're like, basketball practice, dude. But this is the military. Like we, there, there's no sports period for the first three like two and a half weeks, right? Like right, you gotta like right. make it through to get to sports period. And I, exactly. I, I, I was in shock. <laughs> I was in shock. Right. And uh, so that that's definitely a thing. And do you have any, do you have any like stories or anything you remember from your plebe summer that like really woke you up to the fact like, oh no, like I'm in plebe, like I don't get to go and experience all the cool things in the Naval Academy. Like I'm in plebe summer now and like I better, <laughs> I better figure it out. Uh, I think, I think for me, the first couple of weeks, the details were none of the, all the details were fresh for the first couple of weeks. So they're all yelling, they're all in our face yeah. and like yelling in my face is what I expected. So I'm like, okay, people are yelling, whatever. I'm, I'm a tough guy. I can take this fine. Then when it really started to wear on me was you'll realize quickly it's the plebes individually are the most important people during plebe summer, yes. but it's not about you as an individual. It's about how, the entire plebe class is being molded. So the plebes are the priority, but as a plebe, you have to understand this is a team sport. And so for me, it came, I'll never forget, somebody in our company did something that was dumb. We all did stuff that was dumb, but somebody, it was just their day to do the dumb thing. And they did it and they were gonna punish us. And I was mad about it. And the detailers could tell that I was mad about it. Like they could, they could see it on my face that I was like, why am I getting punished for this? Mm -hmm. So I remember one of the detailers said, you know what, Booker? It's fine. You don't have to do this one. Take this chair. You sit down and you watch Sick. everybody else do it. And I was like, yeah, dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that was my wake up call. Yeah. Definitely came too late. This was a couple of weeks in. But that's when I really realized, like, okay, Plebe Summer's no joke. They did not come to play. I need to get with the program or I'm going to get yeah. left behind. And then from there, it got a lot better. I started out really strong the first couple of weeks. Then I started to ta taper off, and then that kind yeah. of brought me back from tapering. So <laughs> back to that, I, that's the one I won't forget. I'll never forget that one. Oh my gosh! And that and that that's like a that's a thing. I remember that too. That was always my favorite. Like when somebody kind of has that attitude or mentality that like, oh maybe like I might I may be above this at any point in time, even the slightest thing. Like you said, even just 100%. given the 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 sight that like you may be frustrated or upset with someone else, it's like oh no. Oh, you think you're better? Like you sit here and then you watch everyone exactly. else go. Like we're gonna beat down all thirty plus kids in your company, and you just get to sit there and watch it. 
Exactly. <laughs> right? You was going to sit exactly. there and watch it. And, so, and sitting in that chair was, I, I felt this big sitting in that chair. I was like, wow, this is the most embarrassing moment I've had up to this point. Yeah. So it and was effective. It, was effective. It, it, it is effective. And like the funny thing, I think probably the funniest thing that you said in there is you're just like waiting for the next person to do something silly. Right. And it's not even, like, it's not even on purpose. Like stuff, like crazy stuff just happens during Pleep Summer because you're moving a million miles an hour. There's a ton of stuff going on. Your mind's in a million places. You're tired. You're exhausted. Like stuff just happens. Right. And I remember that, like, it was, it was my company, right? We had this kid, Rahul Singh, like to this day, friend of mine, <laughs> love the kid. He, uh, he literally, like we were doing uniform races where you're kind of changing, again, you're just filling up time during gray space, like finding stuff to do. And so you have to change between all your different uniforms. And uh, one of them was to change into PT gear. And so he got in his PT gear, put on a pair of Uznas, all that stuff. He comes out, we're on the bulkhead. They're instru- like, they're starting to inspect us. And, uh, He's got a pair of, of the USNA shorts. He's got an Usna on his left eye. And then under that is another Usna. The dude put on two pairs of Usna <laughs> shorts on. Because, like, again, you usually wear them underneath, like, your white works or whatever. So, like, not thinking, he just put on a second pair of shorts over his shorts, right? And so now he's sitting there. He's got, like, the two Usnas on there. And it was the same thing because we had a kid in our company who was, like, the same thing. He's like, Singh, are you kidding me? Right? And I'm like, what's going on? And so the same thing. They put him in the middle. They put him in the chair. They're like, you think you're not going to do anything crazy or mess anything up? Like, you can sit here and watch everything happen. Right? And so, nah, it's just, it, it is funny because it, it is only a matter of time until something happens. Like, and you're going right. to, you know, that's this is my piece. Is like, at some point, no matter how competent you are, no matter how great you are, no matter everything, like, you're going you're gonna to do something. You're, you're going to do something during Pleep Summer. You're going to mess something up, like, that's the purpose. That's the point, right? right? Like right. you're going to get put in those situations 100%. to make it happen. So um, without a doubt. And so kind of moving through your time at the Academy, you got to experience all those great things and then kind of shifting into going into your first year, getting ready for the summer, se- summer going into first year, you apply for a leadership position at Pleve Summer. What made you kind of want to go out for a leadership position during Pleve Summer? And, and with that, like, how did you kind of land that role of being the regimental commander of Pleep Summer? And what was your experience like once you found out like, oh man, I'm going to be the reg commander? Going into Pleep Summer and deciding whether or not I wanted to do it. When I was a plebe, I swore I'd never be a detailer because I didn't like Pleep Summer. I didn't want anything to do with this. So when I was going through Pleep Summer, I swore up and down I'd never be a detail. I was, I'll never do that to people, blah, blah, blah. And you, you'll, you'll come to find that Plebe Summer is an experience in leadership and followership for the plebes, um, but it's it's really an even better exercise in leadership and followership for the detailers. Yep. And so, I mean, we had real world problems that we were having to figure out. We have people on our staff who are, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old, and we're having to make real time decisions like I'm looking at my counterpart. My counterpart was the OIC, as you know. Uh, oh, I see a plebe summer. And I was like, sir, this is what's going on. You know, we, we're kind of dealing with this thing. He's like, all right, what are you going to do about it? Like, yeah, uh, sir, <laughs> these were the things I, I was considering doing. These are the recommendations I would make to you. And he's like, don't make the recommendation to me. You do it. Do it. Like, it's your decision to make. And so that I think was really uh, what I was hoping to get out of it. Finding out about getting that role, the way it works, at least for the reg level positions, you go up on a board, uh, you'll get screened by, first you'll get screened by your company officer, battalion officer, and then they'll send you up to the to the board. And so I went up to the board, I did an interview. It was, it was one of the most intimidating interviews I've done just because they had the entire conference room table and there was one chair on my side and then the other side had the deputy commandant, all the battalion officers, oh, I see a plebe summer. Uh, some senior NCOs and they're all interviewing you. And it's like, whoa. So that was, yeah. that was a great experience uh, getting to, getting to talk to them, but finding out the results, they announced it at lunch. They just put it up on the TV screen, the entire slate. They said, here's your detailers. Uh, and it, it was really cool seeing my face uh, up there on the, up there on the board. Um, yeah. And it, you know, everybody in my company is congratulating me and stuff like that. Uh, it, it was really good, but yeah. you, you really have to, bring it back in and remember like it's not about you at all like as a detailer Mm -hmm. just as much as a plebe it's not about you as an individual you're working with a team um and you have to figure out really fast how to do that in the the most effective way yeah and so what was your vision then like when you again you found out you got the the big old picture going on like hey you're gonna be you're gonna be the regimental commander for plebe summer 
first of all, which set were you? Did you do first or second set? And then um, with that, like, what was your vision? What were you hoping to get out of it personally? But what were you hoping for like plebe summer and like the, what the plebes were going to get out of the summer experience? Yeah, so I was first set. Um, so we really got to come in and set the tone. Set the tone. Um, which, which I thought was great. I really wanted the plebes to understand that like, yes, you are learning how to follow. And, you know, plebe summer is going to break you down. But also understand, like, you need to start learning how you're going to be a leader. The academy, yes, it's a college. And like they say, oh, it's not college. That's really true. Like, it's a college, but there's a lot more to it. You need to be prepared to lead sailors and Marines when you graduate. So just trying to impress upon them the importance of what they're doing um, and understanding how their actions during Plew Summer are going to affect them later. And then on top of that, just instilling this culture of loving the people that you're working with. Um, James Baca, he's one of my best mentors from the Academy. Uh, he is the leader for Officers Christian Fellowship. And I talked to him a lot. Uh, he's a retired Navy captain, uh, pilot, P3 guy. Um, and he, he kind of walked me through the idea of leading with love and how to do that in, in a stern way uh, and in a way that's going to develop the people that you're leading. So yeah. that, that was the other thing I really wanted was for on the detailer side, all of the detailers to really understand what it meant to love the plebes that they were going to be working with uh, and to want the best for them, you know, sacrifice anything for them, uh, pour into them as much as possible. So that was really my vision. Plebe summer is a machine. Uh, It's kind of going to work. It's it's going to work the way it's going to work, Um, but you can (laughs) add in extra things like that. And that's really where I wanted to try to have a a value add there. Sure. No, a hundred percent. I think, I think that piece is really interesting because, because like you mentioned, there are a lot of people who always talk about like, Hey, first set meant to break them down. Second set to build them back up. And like, while those things are true, kind of like you're saying it, all of it is, is the same way. Like when we, cause I was second set, right? So I have kind of the opposite factor. (laughs) I came in three and a half weeks into it and I had to take them to the start of the academic year. Right. Right. And it's like, yeah, yeah, we're building, we're building them back up. But like, that's not just like being nice to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> to build it back up. Like you guys, I joke, like that first set, like you have to break habits. You have to, you have yeah, to break right, habits right. Of, of, of high school kids and start to build the foundation of someone who's kind of ready to join up into the brigade as, as quite literally like a member of the military. Right. And so mm-hmm. I think that piece is really interesting. And the best way to form habits is just to do the same stuff and build that consistency. Right. So like second set, exactly. I just want to give a, a full fair warning to all our lovely parents and, uh, you know, potential appointees out there. Second set's not easy, dude. <laughs> second set's not easy. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, it may feel a little bit easier cause you're used to it a little bit. Right. right? right. But, uh, you know, it, it's that process. Like you're saying it's a machine and it's been built to do that way. And it's, it's meant to break habits and then build new ones. Right. And so, um, I think I always thought that piece was was really interesting. And, and I love what you were talking about there is like, if you can genuinely love the people in, in your platoon, your company, your squad, whatever the case is, and like truly invest in trying to teach them and develop their leadership from that early point, again, the machine's going to work, the, the process is going to happen, but you can make those small little impacts that like, people will remember, please will remember, like there are impacts that certain individuals made in my experience that I remember to this day. Right. And so that's kind of the, the big thing there. So I love, I love that, uh, that piece you had with it. And so, you know, having seen it from the first set in your opinion, and then the second set from my opinion, but seeing plebe summer from a high level, what did you see plebes struggle with the most? Like, what were you, what, what things did you see that like plebes kind of could either get themselves into trouble or had a hard time with? And then on the flip side, what could they do in a positive way to kind of separate themselves in a really positive way? So one thing that you'll see in Plebe Summer, um, and whenever you get there, a place you don't want to find yourself is reg tables. You don't <laughs> want to be the kid that gets sent <laughs> to reg tables. It's not a good That's time. A it's embarrassing. Uh-huh. It looks bad on you. <laughs> Your detailers, like it's a last resort for them. They don't want to send you to reg uh-huh. tables, but they'll do it. So reg tables is basically like where they've tried to get you in line with what they want and it's just not working. So they send you to sit at a meal with the reg commander XO and it's, it's just, it's not a good time. It's not where you want to be. And so consistently what we saw with the ones who were getting sent to reg tables was it was just 
it wasn't ever performance. It's never performance. It's always mentality. It's always attitude. Yep. And That's so if you don't want to buy into the program, okay, you know, you're only hurting yourself really and the people you're going to lead in the future. You know, it's, it's no skin off their back really to send you to rest tables. It's, it's no skin off our back when you're at rest tables for us to, to, you know, to kind of blast you a little bit. But, you know, that's really where people, when they really struggled, it wasn't because of performance. They'll get you to where you need to be performance-wise, whether it's physical, academic, because reef points is a thing. Yep. Reef points is a real thing. Um, you know, you, you'll get caught up on that type of stuff. But the main thing that'll hold people back is their own mentality. One thing that I tried to bring in, and this was kind of controversial when I did it, but positive reg tables if there was a plebe that was doing something that was really, really good uh, mm-hmm. consistently, then we would want to have positive reg tables for them too. And so whenever we would see detailers send their plebes up for that, it was always the ones that were taking time, not only to work on themselves, but to work on others. So to take yeah. their positive mentality and pass it on to the other plebes in their company. Dude, no, that's, one, that's big. That's big time. I'm gonna, one. If you remember one, I'm going I'm to have you talk, talk about that because that was actually something I tried to incorporate too was a little bit of that, that positive reg table and positive reinforcement. So give me give me that example that you're talking about. Yeah, so I, I'll never forget Mr. McShan. He, I, we went up on his on their deck one day uh, to just kind of watch what they were doing. And this kid was smiling. And I remember there was another time I saw him. We were outside and in uniform. This was at PT in the morning at PEP you're not supposed to have your chain hang outside of, if you're wearing a necklace, it's not supposed to be outside your PT gear. Sure. So we had gotten down and we were doing mountain climbers and I was standing up on the podium because I was one of Major Antonelli's like demonstrators yeah. for the day. Yeah. And we were doing mountain climbers, so I'm, I'm leaned over and then I stand back up and my chain's hanging out. And I didn't see this, it's not like I did it on purpose, but I look down and I see Mr. McShann, he goes, Sir. and I was like, oh, Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> so, and then I, I hear from his detailers that he's just consistently, you know, stepping up, being a leader, being positive with, with his classmates. So just being bold, being brave, you know, being somebody that wants to help others without really thinking about yourself, that's what really is going to get you through Plebe Summer. Those are the ones who excel in Plebe Summer. And when you excel in Plebe Summer, you start, you, you give yourself a good reputation going into the year. And then it just, it snowballs forward. So you really do start to make a name for yourself uh, during plebe summer. So Mr. McShane, he, he was always great. Um, I, I'll never forget him uh, as a, as a detailer. Yeah. Also side note, side note on that one, being on the, the pet platform with Major Ancelli, that's the hardest thing I've ever done because you, you know that you know there are a thousand people watching you dude there are a thousand people like you can't like you can't miss a single thing oh my gosh you have to do everything like 100 percent perfect i remember Everywhere doing that for the pack perfect so, i was i was tired i talked to my xo after that i was like i was like you gotta you gotta do more information today because i'm i'm gassed dude i'm gassed oh man oh. that's crazy and uh yeah so just i want to tell a funny like red story uh red table story too because I'm glad you had those positive experiences. I was a very, I yelled probably about three times over Pleep Summer. Like I was not a big okay, yeller. Yeah. My, my XO right, to this right. day, love that dude. He was like, he was like locked on. He was super like strict, regs kind of guy. Like that's just not my personality. You know what I mean? So like when I yelled, it was crazy. And like one of the only times I yelled was during Reg Tables. And uh, <laughs> there was a girl who had written some profanity about uh, one of her detailers on a, on her calendar. That was like left out on her desk, right? Like wrote some profanity. And so they're like, yo, Grant, you got to see this. And I was like, send her to reg tables, dude. Send, send her to reg tables. And so they do. And I remember having like a pre-brief with my team. I was like, all right, guys, this is how it's going to go down. You know, I'm going to ask some questions. When I ask her what she wants a service left, no matter what she answers, like we're going, we're going in, right? Like we're going in, right? And so the, everyone was like, all right, we're on board. And so same thing like happened. She, I was like, you know, I asked some questions. Oh, where are you from? All this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, you have any idea what you want to service like? She's like, oh, I want to go Marine Corps. And so I was like, and once she said that, everyone was like, we like slammed our fans. Like, you want to go Marine Corps? Are you kidding me? You think you've been hate, like you can behave this way and go in the Marine Corps, like blah, blah, blah. And like, 
it went in and it was so funny because at the time gunnery sergeant abbott who was uh you know she was an sel but also in charge of drill she like came over to the table she was like she's like what's going on are you okay because nobody was used to seeing me yelling right and so like i show i showed her like the picture of like what that girl had written she was like yut kill get her <laughs> and i was like let's go <laughs> and so like you know we uh it was just like it was just so wild but just to echo the sentiment Try not to get to Reg tables. Whatever you do, don't go to Reg tables because it's probably not going to be a fun time. It's probably it's, not going to be not a fun time. It's not hard to stay away from Reg tables. If <laughs> it's not hard. hard. If you have a good mentality, you won't go to Reg tables. You may be <laughs> during my set. I think we saw six negative and two positive. Mm-hmm. Reg tables are not a common occurrence. Yeah. Just do the right thing. Do the right yeah. thing and you'll be okay. It's, yeah. it's not hard not to go. But if you find yourself there, Stand by. Stand, stand by. by to stand yeah. by. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So just to just to shift a little bit now and really tailor this conversation to um, you know the appointees who are coming out to Annapolis for for I Day. You know, we're just tailoring the conversation back towards um, you know what you had said earlier about you know thinking oh I probably didn't have the right mindset or mentality coming into Cleve Summer. Um, just trying to see if you wish you would have done anything a little bit differently in preparing for Pleep Summer. In getting ready for Pleep Summer, I think physically I did everything I needed to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I was in decent shape going into Pleep Summer, so I, I didn't have any issues there. When you get ready to go to Pleep Summer, they're going to give you a packet of things you need to memorize. Um, yep. Make sure the Naval Academy is one of them. I think I had to know... Uh, major chain of command up to like the sec nav or sec def. Um, mm-hmm. Memorize those things, learn those things. Yeah. Um, I, I did all that stuff. I think that one thing I could have done, one thing I would definitely do now is learn more about the state of the world uh, mm. geopolitically. There's yeah. a lot going on right now that was not going on when I was getting ready for Plue Summer. Um, you know, right now what we're really seeing more so even now than when I was when I was about to be incoming, we're seeing now peer adversaries, not near peer adversaries. You, yeah. you'll, you'll hear this term near peer adversaries. We're starting to see peer adversaries um, and just learning what the threats to the country are now. Yes, we're a peacetime military, but understand what you're signing up for understand what the nation's interests are you know abroad try Mm -hmm. to frame what you're doing uh with that it's a lot bigger than induction day plebe summer plebe year two for seven all these things you're talking about the academy this is this is the real deal um you're gonna swear an oath and that means something so just get really really serious about that yeah. It's it's not a it's not a you know I don't mean to throw like rain on the parade or anything. It's just something to, to consider as you get ready to go. I think yeah. that also helps as you're getting ready to make this commitment. Being committed just means doing what you said you were going to do when the mood that you set it in has passed. And so mm-hmm. understand what it is that you're committing to, uh, so that you can you can properly do that. Count the cost yeah. before you before you go. I love it. It's, it's, it's great advice. And kind of just, just with that. And, you know, I think that's, that's really interesting. And and I think kind of in a a niche funny way that may actually help you like in the midst of plebe summer as well. Cause exactly, you know, I don't know how your experience was, but I mean, I mean, even from like the funniness of just like being at meals and meal tables, right? Like a lot of conversation and a lot of questions about, Hey, what articles did you read in the paper today? Cause again, you don't have your phones during plebe summer. Nothing like what you get is a newspaper, right? And they'll ask you like, hey, what articles did you memorize? What are, or not memorize, but what articles did you read all this stuff? And so if you come in well-read and you come in understanding kind of like the state of the world, being able to read some of those things and just little snippets and be able to have good conversation will be really helpful, right? Like that's, that's like a, an an impressive, important thing to do too. And so, uh, no, very, very interesting insight. And then, um, you know, kind of, away from your experience and just kind of talking again directly to some of the appointees now, how can they best prepare themselves from, you know, we kind of talked a little bit here about overarching mindset Mm -hmm. advice. We talked a little bit about being uh, under, like read up on the current state of the world, but what would you talk to people about in terms of fitness, academic, studying, reef points or not, um, and anything else you kind of see fit? Like what would you uh, 
give as advice for best preparation kind of coming into plebe summer? So in order to get ready for plebe summer, you definitely are going to want to be in good shape. You're going to want to be in good running shape. Yeah. Um, you're going to run a lot at pep and they're going to break you out into running groups. Uh, you can always move up a running group once plebe summer started, but coming in with a really good baseline is going to help you stand out. So, you know, if you're really into lifting, cause like that was, that was always my thing in high school mm -hmm. lifting. I loved, I didn't do a lot of running, at least not long distance running. I was a sprinter uh, on the track team run, get your cardio up. If you're not a good swimmer, start swimming. Swimming is something that is not necessarily tied to how fit you are. It's a technique thing. So if you're not a super strong swimmer, start swimming because there's going to be swim that you have to do during pleep summer. Uh, and that's, that's really going to help you. For the PRT, just understanding what the PRT is, because that's going to be another metric that they use. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's really the main metric. So it's going to be cadence push-ups. That was a new thing during my plebe summer was the cadence push-ups. Yep. Familiarize yourself with cadence push-ups uh, and then make sure you can you can do the plank. Um, maxing the plank is it, it can be kind of gimme points if you can if you can max the plank. So um, yep. work on that. And then the last part of it is just that mile and a half run. Running yep. is really the main thing. Get good <laughs> running shoes. Get running good running, running. Shoes before you go. Yes, running is the main thing. That I, and I think that's huge, right? And especially I'm talking to all my varsity athletes out here that are like, <laughs> you know, think they're in great shape, right? Because that, right, that was right. me. I was 17. I was like, dog, I'm about to go play Division One basketball. <laughs> like, I'm fine. <laughs> like, you run a lot, right? And it's, and it's, you know, what's really interesting is it's not even necessarily about being the fastest. It's about your health, right? Because if you yeah. go from not doing any long distance running to running five times a week, like, you're going you're gonna to hurt, right? And I'm not saying you're going to yeah. get injured, but you're going to hurt, right? And if you get to a point where – you're starting to get shin splints or your knees are starting to bother you, right? It puts yourself in a really bad spot from a, from a lot of right. different aspects. Like you don't want to be hurt, but then you're also in a point where like, if you can't run, then you're one of the people that's just left out on the field while everyone else is running. And that's not a great right. look. You know what I mean? And so um, that's, that's always my biggest advice. Like you're saying, get good running shoes and run, run before you get here just to keep yourself healthy, right? Like this biggest thing right. is you need to train your legs. You need to put miles on your legs and you need to get used to it before you get here. So that way you stay healthy. And that goes to all my varsity athletes too. I know you think you're in great shape, but the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself before going into the school year because you didn't properly prepare for the reality of the Naval Academy experience, which is that you have to go through plebe summer right. before you make it into the academic year, right? And you go on and play your sport or whatever the case is. So, you know, I think I think that piece is that really big and I'm glad you touched on that. Uh, and that's that's the one thing I wish I would have told myself, you know, before I showed up was just run. Right, just run more. Just run more. Yeah. Um, shin that'd be the one. Stress fractures. We saw a yeah. lot of shin splints and stress. Just going back up to the the Reg Commander view, we would yeah. see when people would be injured. We saw saw a lot of shin splints and stress fractures, and that just comes from either not running properly, uh, not being in great running shape. You know, doing way more miles than you're used to. Don't let the first time that you run five miles be at the Naval Academy during plebe summer, you're already yeah. wrong. Uh, if you're, if you're in that position, you're already wrong. Already. Already. And so, uh, you know, I think the Naval Academy usually sends out like a, almost like a running plan before showing up to yeah, plebe summer. They do. they do. Right. Like, so I'm about to, I'm about to give the most radical advice of all time of like all this Academy insider stuff and giving advice for plebe summer. Follow what they send you, dude. Right. Like this is the crazy <laughs> thing is that you don't need any like inside secrets, you know, anything. Like if you prepare for the running and take care of your health and then you show up, like, again, I've heard people be like, oh, just, you know, buy a copy of Reef Points, study all this stuff. If you want to do that for mm -hmm. your own entertainment, sure. Right. But like, just, just memorize what they tell you to memorize for I day, right? Like if you show up right. and, and you're prepared for I day, it sets you up for success, like throughout the time going through it. Right. And so um, there are all these different things, but you know, the, the crazy advice and the recommendation is just like actually do what the Naval Academy tells you to do to prepare to show up. And I think like you yeah, actually put yourself right. in a really good spot. You actually put yourself in a really good spot. Um, so, all right. Uh, with that I is, will, I will oh yeah, please, this, please so, give me some. Um, this just kind of goes back to your question about, you know, what can I do going into plebe summer? Uh, yeah. Not necessarily physically. If you're going to do extra, do what they tell you to do because the programs they come up with are good. But if you're going yeah. to do extra, when I was at the basic school, uh, Colonel McClan, he's the commanding officer of the basic school. One thing he told us was think about what you think about leadership. If you're going to do extra, 
seek out books on leadership so that you can prepare your mind that way. That's just one little thing that I, that I would add in there. Uh, just talking about the program that the Naval Academy is going to put you on to get you ready. Yeah. If you're going to do anything extra, I would suggest make it about leadership because uh, that's, that's going to serve you well as you're trying to get through those hard times. No, I love it. I appreciate it. And as we get ready to kind of wind this down and wrap up, um, do you have any other, again, parting words of wisdom, parting advice, things that you would like to take this opportunity kind of um, related to anything you want. Again, addressing parents, addressing future appointees, like what would you tell them? What's your overarching advice and just anything that you want to relay to them? I guess just a few things. Plebe summer is challenging. Uh, it's meant to be challenging. Don't underestimate the challenges of plebe summer and don't underestimate yourself. If you underestimate the challenges of plebe summer and you think it's going to be a cakewalk, uh, then when it gets hard, you're going to be in for a really rude awakening. And kind of on the flip side of that, if you underestimate yourself and your abilities, then the first time you fail at something, because you will fail at something during plebe summers, designed so that you fail at at least a few things. The first mm -hmm. time that you fail at something, you're going to get really discouraged. You're going to feel like you slipped through the cracks and you're going to get imposter syndrome. So just don't underestimate the program and don't underestimate yourself and learn how you define success. Success during plebe summer and success at the Naval Academy is not going to look like what it looked like in high school. A lot of people come to the academy, they were top performers in their classes, top 5%, top 1% in their class, 99th percentile on the SAT, ACT, varsity team captains, like everybody's got those stats. When everybody's got those stats, you have to define success differently because you might not be top of your class anymore because everybody else was top of their class. Learn what success means to you. Is it being the fastest one on the run or is it being the one that finishes the run and then goes back to encourage somebody else who's struggling on the run? Maybe that's what success looks like for you is still having some energy in the tank for that, you know? Mm -hmm. So just define success, define it every day. Uh, and then the last thing I'll say, find something that you can hold on to during plebe summer to keep you grounded. My thing was always my faith. Everybody's got something, but find something that can keep you grounded because it can be easy to forget why you're doing what you're doing when it gets hard. Uh, yeah. find, find whatever that thing is for you, but it's going to be okay. If you are at least, a, if you're capable enough to get into the Naval Academy, then you're capable enough to make it through plebe summer. So everything is going to be fine once you get yeah. to plebe summer and get through induction day. No, 100%. And, and thank you so much for, for all that. I couldn't agree more uh, and echo that sentiment. Um, and I'm just going to add just a little bit on about my own, you know, personal parting uh, advice and, and thoughts on all this. And this comes from the perspective of a dude who quite literally almost left during plebe summer, right? Like, again, if, if you're not familiar with my story, I highly encourage you to go back and, and look at all the resources that I have out with Academy Insider where I kind of tell my story, but like, I was ready to go, right? Like I was ready to go. I didn't, I wanted nothing to do with it about, about like two and a half weeks in <laughs> 4th of July night when those fireworks were popping <laughs> off and people say, Ooh, ah, I was like, doc, I'm done. I was like, I just want to go home. Right? I just want to go home. And so, you know, I sit here and I tell this story and it's, and it's really funny. And I'm, I'm at this point where, again, I separated from the Navy a year ago. I graduated from the Naval Academy in 2017. I did my five years. I did multiple submarine deployments. I, I did my, I, I served my country and I'm really proud of everything that I've done. I can sit here as a 28 year old in a civilian world, like doing my own thing, building my business now, just enjoying life that the Naval Academy is a generationally changing opportunity. This university and this institution is incredible because of the people that you're going to meet, because of the experiences you're going to go through, because of the network you're going to become a part of. Like all this stuff is incredible. Going to the Naval Academy was the best decision I ever made in my life. And when you, if you asked me that while I was a plebe, I would have been like, this, you're crazy. <laughs> like this, this is, you're crazy. Right. And so I just want to reiterate how special this place is. And I encourage you to not make a permanent decision based off temporary emotion. Right. Absolutely. And like, had I made the decision to leave the academy, my life would not be the same. Right. And so um, that's my big, my big thing here. Don't, don't make a permanent decision off a of temporary emotion. Find that thing that grounds you, right? Like Grant's talking about, find that thing that, that grounds you and just, and just keep going through because being a graduate from the United States Naval Academy is, is a life changing opportunity. It's a community changing opportunity. It's a generational changing opportunity for a family, right? And so fight through it. 
the second thing kind of like, again, just kind of talking about my experience is that whatever your reason for going to the academy is, is the right reason and never doubt that. Right. And so, you know, I had a lot of people during my plea summer telling me, oh, you came here to play basketball. You didn't come here for the right reason. You need to leave. The mission of the Naval Academy is to develop midshipmen, morally, mentally, physically, in order to kind of pursue that career of naval service and being a part of it. This isn't OCS. You're not here being screened. They have taken right. highly competent, highly amazing, high leadership individuals to bring to the academy to develop them into people who are ready to go and serve in the Navy and Marine Corps. Right. And so, you know, I had self doubt as a part of that and part of wanting to leave. I was like, I don't even like, I don't belong here. Right. I don't, I'm not like everyone else. I don't belong here. And I think that's the biggest thing is just understanding, like, own your experience, realize that your reason for coming is the right experience. And like by being at the academy and buying into it and investing in it and being a part of the experience, it will develop you into the point where you're ready to go out and lead sailors and Marines, just point blank, period. Right. And so that's my parting advice. Everything that Grant said, everything that I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me here at Academy Insider. I can put you in touch with Grant. He's a busy man. That man is actually in the Marine Corps. I got a lot more time to talk now, but, uh, <laughs> you know. Again, anything we can do for any parents out there, grandparents out there, aunts, uncles, appointees getting ready to come. If you have any questions, if you just want to talk, if you want to get ready and just like, again, talk, feel free to shoot me a message here. I would, I would love to, I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it. I'd love to help. Um, I want to end this episode by just reiterating one more time about how special of a place the United States Naval Academy is. You should feel blessed to have this opportunity to come here. For all the parents out there and family members, you should be so proud. Like, this is really cool. And uh, I hope you know you're joining a community of people who are who are ready to go and like change the world and make a really positive impact on it, right? And so, so yeah, Grant, anything else? Anything you want to end the episode with? No, I could not agree more with everything you said. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, like you said, if if you want to uh, throw my email in there for for people to reach yeah. out, um, I, I'll I check it as much as I can. Um, and I I love to talk to anybody who's who's coming in. Uh, the academy is a special place. I was in a similar place where I wanted to leave, not during plebe summer, but <laughs> after plebe year, I was yeah. I was working on an application to another school. Sure. Uh, and I'm, I'm so glad I stayed. I, I've had a lot of great opportunities. So um, thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me share my experiences. I watched Academy Insider videos when I was getting ready <laughs> to go to plebe summer. And so it's just so funny now that I, I get to be a part of one of these. So, you know, I, I hope it helps circle, at least man. one or two people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. Again. All right. Absolutely. Grant, thank you so much, man. To everyone listening, I hope you have a really amazing day. Thanks. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Academy Insider Podcast. I really hope you liked it, enjoyed it, and learned something during this time. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe or leave a comment about the episode. We really appreciate to hear your feedback about everything and continue to make Academy Insider an amazing service that guides, serves, and supports midshipmen, future midshipmen, and their families. Thank you.